So I'm going to start. I'm going to say this interview is being conducted on April 14, 2005 at 6817 Cleveland Avenue in Niles, Illinois. My name is Kate Wallachie. I am speaking with Mr. Walter Timchuk. Mr. Timchuk was born in Chicago and now lives in Niles, Illinois. Mr. Timchuk learned of the Veterans History Project. Oh, I forgot to ask where you learned it through. Through um, Jan Chica, Governor, I mean, uh, Representative Schakowsky, oh. and uh, also at the um, memorial a dedication of the World War II Memorial on May 29th and through the oh, Niles right. Library. I've forgotten it was all those places. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of I consented know. to be interviewed for the project. Here is his story. His wife may also be commenting. Her name is Celine Timchuk. Marie Celine Timchuk. Marie Tim Celine Timchuk. Yes, that's the legal, my legal name. Mm -hmm. All right, so <laughs> we're going to start at the beginning when you entered the military. So it we kind of lead up. So I was drafted on December 2nd, 1942. We assembled at, at, uh, at downtown uh, Armory, I believe, and we were examined, and then we were shipped to, uh, to Camp Grant. And we had a, there we had to got change clothes, ship our clothes back home and we had to take our flu test and then we had we were assigned to our unit which was Camp Claiborne, Louisiana oh. and had basic training there and then we had maneuvers there too the swamps of Louisiana and then after the maneuvers we were shipped to t Texas Camp, Camp House. Years. And then from there I got shipped to, across to sea. To, so the, to the East Coast. So to the East Coast. Then we got boarded there on uh, December 6th. And we sailed at the 7th. We got about the 15th or 16th to England. And then on train we went out to southern part of uh, England, out in the open field with pitch tents for two, three days. And then on the 19th, or, we loaded on a ship, and we landed on the 20th on the beach. And it was a severe thunderstorm, the rough, awful rough waters. And we walked two steps up and slide three down. Up the cliff. Off the cliff. And, uh, Finally, we were all so exhausted, it brought, God managed to get trucks to us. We loaded us up, they took us to, to the, uh, the, east, the other part of France. And then we waited there three days for Patton to, to get, or brings his tanks to get organized. And then we pushed off, we attacked it on the third day, I think it was. We had another severe thunderstorm, but we had to stay on a muddy road. We couldn't walk off it because the area was mined heavily. And for some reason at the time, we started going across, the Germans started shelling us so heavily that every time a shell come, you hit the dirt, the road, dirt, you, you like in puddles of water, mud. It took us about a couple hours to get through that. And then finally we, we pushed the Germans back, and then we waited the next day, we pushed off again, and he got the Germans on a run, and then Patton came in with his tanks, and we marched, they mopped up after him, and then we sometime between there and, uh, uh, what, what town was I said, Paris? Uh, uh, yes. I can't think of the thing. Anyway, we're down the, the coast, and we swung around to Paris, and we sat outside of Paris because the French wanted to take their own town because we were afraid we would destroy it. <clears throat> then when they secured it, we turned around and started going toward Belgium, Luxembourg. And um, we were going along all right, and all of a sudden the Germans got set up and they started shelling us. 
And uh, when we were up there that long, you hear the shells, you could tell almost how close or how far away they're going to hit. If the sound they're going to hit is far, you don't hit the ground or anything, you just keep going. But if it's close, you hit the ground. Well, this time was pretty close, and the shells were coming in. There was a shell coming in that hit a, a reconnaissance plane that blew up in the sky. And the next thing I knew, one was coming a little closer to me, so I hit the ground and hit the top of the tree. And it exploded and hit me in the, the shrapnel hit me in the back, knocked the wind out of me. And how long I was unconscious out of the wind, I don't know. And uh, tell about the backpack. The backpack was shot. That was off. early. That was just, well, well, you you missed that. Well, anyway. Like I said, I had three close calls. Like a pack was shut off of me, and I had the, the sh uh, shrapnel hit me in the back, injury. It shot And then I got the shot, bullets made a pattern on my face. And uh, we reached Belgium. Didn't run into Belgium, but to Belgium. The pattern ran out of ammo and gas, so the supply couldn't keep up with them. So they pulled us out and went to to help the French, uh, Americans in Italy. And we fought with them up to the Rhine River. And then the Battle of Balls broke out. And they pulled us out to go help at the Battle of Balls, where I got kind of out of, out of, uh, mentally ill. And it, I came home. They sent me to the first aid station, and from there they sent me to Eng uh, France, and they examined me. And, England. Oh, and, I know. And they examined me, and they said, well, don't worry about it. They waited, go to your room, they'll get your records, we'll let you know, in three to four days. They said, don't worry about it, you're on your way home, so you get a ship. Six months on the front lines. <coughs> and another time you had a shell that shot your ammo belt and your pants well, belt. That's the time that I got hit. That you got hit in the back. That was that's later. That saved me. There was my my cartridge belt, and my uh, regular belt. Otherwise, I would I would have come out of here. Other people saved by the Bible. You're saved by the belt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. The Bible belt. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came home, and then was that's it. Well, you you were in sure. you were in a hospital in Tennessee for a while, a mental they hospital. They shipped us closest to home, so they shipped us to Battle Creek, Michigan, at um, in Custer, at Fort Custer. Yeah, and hospital. They, yeah, and they got my discharge from there, and I came home. So before you before you were drafted. Before you were drafted, what were you doing? Where did you live and what did you yeah, do? I lived in Chicago. I worked for an industrial lamp company. So I was a mean? spot welder. We used to make the desk lamps and the stove lamps. He would have been... I would have got out of it. Uh, ...exempt <coughs> because two months after he was called in, they got a government contract. Yeah. And he would have been exempt from going because into the... I was a foreman. And we were making these cat eyes for the tanks and uh, uh, jeeps for night driving. Yeah. Wow. So... So... I, so and then uh, I got out of service, my company that I worked for, they moved from Chicago to Indiana. So and I, just felt, I felt I didn't want to move to Indiana. So, so then what did you do after the war? Well, I, I bounced swept, around all over trying to get a floors. job because if you had a disability, they wouldn't hire you. You couldn't work or operate a machine. You couldn't do nothing. Yeah. You could maybe a, a stock clerk or a broom sweeper. So doing I worked for. Doing uh, this, I got a mental. job at the uh, rubber. Right in rubber company, I was a stock boy and a cleanup boy, you know, bring the supplies and take the supply, finish work away and, and clean, clean up the place. Then I got got into it with my, uh, my supervisor. Right, that's all right. 
<laughs> so and then what, right, so after after Dryden rubber, then what did you do? I worked for Hyde, you know, and then uh, Montgomery Wards. Uh, mm -hmm. After we met, mm -hmm. you did everything. I got jobs for him too. So so anyway, I the uh, my superintendent got most mad. He got a whiff of it that uh, the head superintendent was coming to me asking for supplies that whether we had them or not. Yeah. Well. I, he came to me and I said, yes, we have them. He says, would you take them and bring them upstairs right away? I said, okay. And my boss, that boss came down, he, he, he said he fired me right out of the spot there. And uh, before I could get home, they called me up and would I come back to work? <laughs> I said, no, thank you. I said, the guy been there for 40 or 30 years. He knows all of all the head foremen in every department. I said, I wouldn't get along. Yeah. So anyway, I found out he got fired about two months later. My goodness. So. All right, so we're taking you all the way back then. We're going to mm -hmm. go back to the very beginning when you, when, um, you said you were inducted. You told me already. De yes. Mm -hmm. And so... But what was it like those first days that you were in the army? Well, you were all. Uh, it was. Uh, it's pretty like uh, it was sudden new. You know, like uh, you d you didn't know what to expect or what to, you were going to get into. So you, did they? Everything was a, a did mystery. They, did they ask you what your jobs were prior to put you in a certain no. uh, detail of any kind? No. Mm -hmm. Because he was in the CCCs in when he was seven to, uh, sixteen to mm -hmm. seventeen in Wisconsin, and I thought, uh, be, and they planted half of those tr evergreens in Wisconsin. So um, I thought maybe they asked no. you what you ha what you were in on because he did farming before that, and, and uh, well, you didn't you weren't a truck driver or, or so forth like. I uh, I don't know how I got the job, but I got the job on the farm. My mother and father made a race stuff. I somehow found out that they needed a helper yeah. to work on the farm. So I went, got the job. I worked one week. I got three dollars a week. Five in the morning. From five in the morning to nine at nine thirty at night. For seven three dollars a week. Seven, do seven, seven days. days a week. And I got beat out of my job. A tramp came by and was willing to work for a dollar and a half. Oh no. He worked two weeks and he quit. The farmer came back, wanted me to come back to work. I said, No, thank you. Meantime I went and joined the Civil Service Conservation Corps. Yeah. And there I got twenty-one dollars a month. <laughs> I want to work five days, somebody six hours a day. I got a clothing, they got fed. <laughs> Sounds like a better deal to me. <laughs> so they didn't they didn't care when you went when and you then the war broke they out, they closed you. up the camps. Yeah. So I got a job at the uh, <coughs> driving on a belt company making belts. Which is why <coughs> they saved you. Mm -hmm. And I got eight cents an hour. <laughs> Eight cents an hour. I brought home $10.50. Uh, and I worked, I was a slave lander. I got the job, the boss came and said, you're doing a good job. I work a week and he says, I want more work. Peace work. Yeah. Oh, he was, okay, I did. He says, very good. Then three weeks later, he come back, I want more. I couldn't do it. But there was a line half a block long waiting for my job. Yeah. They didn't care. So they got everything you could out of me. <coughs> mm -hmm. okay. You said that when they when you were drafted that they gave you an IQ test. Did yeah. they give it to you like they did in the like did they give it to you in a big room or did they give it to you were you alone or what? I can't recall that, but but uh, everybody. I think we were in everybody one room. Probably yeah. in one room. I think we were all in one room with a written test, yeah. you know. Not a fan of tests myself. So. 
So you went from you you went overseas in nineteen forty four? Yeah. 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 So you were you were training for a year, year and a half? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that I normal? I got 18 it, months in the state, 18 months overseas. So was that normal? Is that usually what people did? Well, they no. had basic training usually at one camp and then sent you to another camp for advanced basic training. So what did, what, yeah. what did you learn? Yeah. What did you learn? Yeah. How to travel by night, <laughs> by campus. If you did locate your location, food, was waiting for you. If you didn't look fine your area, you didn't eat that day. Yeah. So the, and you said you you won a how to how to how, how to, to shoot, shoot a rifle, right, you, and the the equipment wasn't the best. Even overseas, it wasn't the best. Yeah, that was all right. Was it better? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And did you make friends there, or did you not get to what, know what people? Is, what did you make friends? No, with all the friends we were gone. My buddy that I, I in basic training, when he went to Italy, I went to, to Europe. Europe to we, was, we corresponded, and uh, he got killed because my letter came back that he, he was deceased. So, so did, did you, so you didn't travel overseas, did you have any of the people that you had done your basic training with that were still with you, or no? no? They kept splitting <coughs> up. Well, then what happened was once, we, we, like I said, they started break, breaking our company up right after um, maneuvers. They took a whole bunch of uh, out of each company. Then overseas, after, and after we went to Texas, they did the same thing. There was only about 25% of us left. Goodness, was there a reason for that? Well, yeah, to, to uh, fill in so, for the so they were pulling people. Yeah, out. guys that got wounded and killed. That's how I imagine. Yeah. And the buddies you went My over buddies. with, they were killed in the invasion. Well, were they not? I you guess told so. me that. I don't know. He has no idea where he landed. So many of the men know that they were at Omaha, Utah gold, whatever beach it was. He has he said it was pitch black and they had no idea where he landed because his friend bought back some of the sand from Omaha and gave him a vial of that sand. And he said, I don't know what where I landed. It well, was near it was near it was near Saint Saint Lowe. It was near it was uh, yes, yeah, because I remember going through Saint Lowe. That's why I know it's on that All side. All I remember is that horrible cliff. And that, and, and it, it was, was raining. Muddy. It the Germans were fly down. Were they up. still shooting from top oh, yeah. from up those, there? Those, you could hear the bullets. The town was still smothering. The Saint Louis was still on fire. Oh, okay. And then we seen soldiers' bodies float down the uh, along the shore. There was blood in the water. The red was. So, so all that's just in your mind, you know. You just you just can't uh, overlook it. I wouldn't let him see Saving Private Ryan because I knew what it would do to him. But that he, t- but that twenty-five well, minutes. First anyway, what 25. happened then? He got trucks and shipped us from this side of uh, the peninsula to this side, mm-hmm. and then we we, we were stationed here. And uh, commander, they told us to dig in. We could stay here a couple of days, and then we'll move move out. On the second day, a colonel came up, gave us a briefing. He says these guys don't expect to come home. He says, if you go out there and you get killed before you kill a German, while well, you're you didn't wasn't trained properly. And he says if. If you killed five or more, and you got killed. You were you were well trained. You were a hero. He said, "Don't expect to come home." We were stretched out. He said, "Drink your t- trench holes here and and have your lunch because we might be shopping off in the evening, moving out." How are you going to eat? There's yeah. a trailer there, full of blood and part body parts. 
maggots crawling all over the thing. And you sitting there and you're supposed to eat. Well, were they trying to get you to eat? What what was there to eat? Well, we were lining up to get to get ready for uh, did, for the attack. Did you have a mess thing, or did you have your own uh, food in a container? Mm -hmm. No, we had mess baskets. Mm -hmm. A mess basket. It's knife, fork, spoons, mm -hmm. cup. The kits, mess kits. And uh, the K rations, so we never have to use the mess kits. Yeah because they were shot off in holes in it anyway. I mean, the bullets hit my back. Because when I hit the back, my pack stood up. Wow. And they, they shot it off. Tell. My raincoat was like, I could shift spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Will you tell the, uh, the recording about your being in that barn in France when you lost your hearing? And they have no record of it. Well, that I don't know how that happened because we stopped at the place we for the night and then uh, I woke up next morning I couldn't hear from the um, uh, artillery I don't know where it was from that you woke up in a barn yeah mm -hmm. <coughs> and then I went to the first aid station and I couldn't hear so it took me to the field hospital they kept me there a week they finally got my hearing back did they do anything, or did it just come back gradually? And then they what me. did they do? To I don't know. They examined me. They dug so around in there. So it just came there. back by itself, probably. And he couldn't get uh, help for that when he got home because they had no record of it. And and no proof. I had to have proof and records. Yeah. How are you going to have? <laughs> they didn't notice that you couldn't hear before the war. You'd think that they would know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, then, then finally we got my hearing back and I went up, back up to the front lines. I would like you to say, and you don't like to talk about it, about that Polish man. No, I don't want to go into that. No. Will you let me say? No. All right. No. Okay. Are no. you allowed to say you don't want to share something? No. It's all right. Mm -hmm. So, I had a... Living conditions. Well, what was it like going from being a civilian to being a soldier? Well, we were, uh, trouble was nobody here. All the friends that were, they were all overseas or in the, in the, so you were, you Lone, had nobody to Kind of lonesome. Kind of lonesome. Uh, My brothers were all still in the service. Did they all go before you? No, no. I went first. That's why I, I was first. surprised they didn't send him back because he was the oldest boy. Yeah. There was only, and all four went in. Did, were, they all, <coughs> were they all drafted? No, the, the three of us were, but the fourth one found, uh, joined the navy. Joined the oh. navy. He was in the um, Bay of Tokyo, I believe. They were waiting to invade Japan. Mm -hmm. The um, your did it. Let's see. I had a question. It just went away from my head. Um, to where your all your your one brother was in the navy. What, what were where were the others? Do you the know? other one was with the 69th Infantry. I was with the 79th, and my other brother was with the 83rd or 82nd. Paratrooper. Uh, paratrooper. Uh, Kasmer was a paratrooper medic in the Alps. My goodness. And Joe Joseph was in um, in Europe, and I believe from a picture that we saw of him that he was one of those who shook hands with the Russians at the Albi River. I believe. I believe so. Um, our friend in California, it was her brother, Joseph, Joe, who was the originator of the shaking hands with the Russians, and he's now buried in Torgau, Germany. So all your, you and all your brothers came back? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My grandfather and all his brothers were um, all in service. There were seven of them. Okay. My grandfather's yeah. 20 years older than his mm -hmm. youngest brother, so they were all in all the service. All of them. And but all of them lived. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah, that's like in, in My dad was draft, was going to be drafted. He had to sign up. He was fucking 45 then. Wow. And, uh, he but would be going to the next group that they would need to start by age. And was, right. And he was about ready to be called too. My goodness. Yeah, but he didn't have to go, so. We were present at the um, dedication of the World War II Memorial last May 29th. Um, and uh, we were there that day. We didn't face the stage, but it's a good thing because we would have been way in back. We were in section two where they showed everything on the screens, mm -hmm. and it was really a beautiful day, really one. We were treat. you cannot believe the volunteers, how they treated everyone. It was wonderful. Sitting next to us was a man that had a cap on. I survived Pearl Harbor. And he was in a wheelchair, you know, and I said, my goodness, all these people that came, you know, that was a beautiful, wonderful thing. The memorial is great. Awesome. Yeah. I called WGN after we got back and spoke to Steve Cochran and told him about it. And he sent us a lobster gram, which we haven't used yet. <laughs> <laughs> We've had too many medical problems. <laughs> Lobster gram. Yeah, we got, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, you said that you were in tents in, in England, in the open fields. And when then, you, do when you, remember, you first went to England. Yeah, yeah. do you remember where, where you, as you moved along, did you ever get to sleep inside? No, it was all night time. So you all only moved at we night? We didn't even know, we, we landed, it was dark. Yeah. Dark, we got on to, uh, onto a train, and it took us down. And I know it's a dark, an out open field. They have no idea what, what cities they were in. We didn't know nothing. Well, at least they didn't have to worry about you telling anybody, mm, huh? No. no, no, that was... Uh, mm. But um, Did you see a lot of towns as you were traveling? You caught it. They had it was blackout. They had well, the yeah. shades, the, the yeah. shades there down. There were no lights so in the homes. There was no lights. No. There was nothing. No. It was dark. It was all black. All street turned off. So did you write letters home? Ah. Uh, I did, when I had time, but not very often. Did people write to you? No. His sister. Sister, mainly. The others were in the service too. So. Did it? Did Did you get? Did you receive your mail very often? No. So how no. did you get it when you did? did well, it? They brought us to the front line. Under fire. There, there's uh, whatever they call them. Um, uh, the the fellows that brought it, uh, they brought the mail. The ones brought the like supplies, like water and food, to us. Oh, the, the supply the people. So did it, did it yeah. take a long time sometimes for the mail to come, or did you? We don't know. I never kept track. See, yeah. I did not know Wally then. I was in sixth grade. So I, <laughs> I wrote to uh, those uh, v, v mails, those letters, I wrote to my brothers. I had um, uh, one brother that was in uh, Heidelberg, and I wrote to him. My nephew, who is now 80 years old, living in Glenview, I wrote to him. He was a tail gunner in Italy and never went on a plane until about 10 years ago. He finally went on a plane. He wouldn't get on a plane. He was a tail gunner in the 8th eighth, eighth Airborne, I believe it was, 8th. And um, so, lots of, I had quite a few people, you know, that way. Well, none of us talked about it. My brothers came home, they didn't talk about it. None of us talked about war. Not at all. No, no. 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 Did it, did, was it too painful to talk about, or did it... I cannot, I don't know. Were you afraid to tell I don't people, know. you know? Like I said, I'm afraid I'd have night, more nightmares. I said that. I just, when we went to um, Washington, D.C. last summer, is the first time I knew about some of the things that Richard went through. I had no idea. Because they were supposed to invade Japan, and they didn't. And uh, he didn't want to tell me even that um, when that was canceled because of the atomic bombs, that they so sailors had to go on shore 
and put the bodies in body bags and throw them on trucks for cremation. But I, I never knew that. I said, Richard, you know, he said, I, I, we just didn't talk about it. The, pe the people from Second World War did not discuss, you're hearing this all over in magazines, in interviews, and so forth. A lot of them didn't, won't talk today yet. No, they don't. Um, they had a, uh, like a reunion and at Normandy for the 50th anniversary, and he wouldn't go. He said only the ones that were on the back lines that weren't there really, they would go, go there. And I wanted him to go to the reenactment they had at Montrose Beach. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't go to that either. And then another thing I can recall now, the Germans use, use women. The French women. They weren't, they weren't German, they were Polish. Oh. Or whatever, nationality, whatever they have, uh, Jewish women. This is for the front line. Because when we, they opened fire on us, when we started shooting back, they started withdrawing. I could see them lifting their skirts up so they could run fast to get away. That's how we found out do that you they want, were women. Do you also want to mention in France the w women and children in the bell towers shooting at <coughs> you, and then when you kill them, you discover the they... We call for artillery. A shell, artillery shell hit the tower, <coughs> and it's, but it's the first firing stopped, so we went to investigate to see what happened, what was there. There was a woman with three children. Oh my goodness. Firing at us. Who got, she got in with the German soldiers because mm -hmm. they gave her food or helped her children <coughs> or what. And so they they were shoot the French women were shooting at the Americans. Well, the other thing was, like our supplies or sometimes wouldn't come to us. Even mm -hmm. little K rice and we were hungry. Yeah. So we used to go to the farmers and ask for food, you know, or and uh, we used to go in the gardens and pull carrots or potatoes and we used to mix make ourselves a stew. We used to use our K K box in a pot of coffee and, and heat it and cook it. Mm -hmm. By the time it burned out, it, it was all done. So finally, we never knew where the, for the uh, French kept their sausage. Mm -hmm. So finally, it dawned on us. They kept them in the uh, fireplaces up there, smoking. Like a smoke. You smoke. to smoke them, and so mm -hmm. you wouldn't find them. We wanted them. to buy them for yeah. them. They wouldn't sell it to us. So I said, well, either you give it to us, buy it, or we, we, we'll take it anyway. So you got to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some were generous. We gave them money for it. We didn't take it. The money we gave them, they, they wouldn't have to work for another five years. For what I value our money to compares to theirs. Yeah. Um, we went, we took a, a vacation. Uh, we went to, um, for the Passion Play in Oberammergau in 1990 and coming back to the coast, we had to pass through areas where the hedgerows were, where they had to go, and that uh, was not good for him, for Walter. Yeah. It was too many memories. Another thing that comes back to me now, coming back, we were in the woods, we came out of the woods, and it was an open field. And uh, I'd say about, couple hundred yards or better was a hedgerow, you know. So we were afraid of them, hedgerows, because the Germans could be sit behind them. Well, but so happened that they weren't there. We, well, our whole company went across. Our poor medic took one step and he stepped out of mine. Oh my we got a word later from the, that the, they had, there was enough mines in that field, it would take them 10 years to to, do, to get rid of them. How we got across without stepping on one, we don't know. I don't know. So. War is not like the movies. No. Was it different being in, were, had you ever been in another country before you went into the service? No. 
Was it different? Did you think the trees were different? We didn't know what to expect. So, mm -hmm. well, what did everything you find? was a uh, surprise, you know. So, what, what we know, of, what we know of Europe or that, we'd only seen what in pictures or movies. That's about it. Was it Kaz that visited your cousin in France? My sister did, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, and during the war. Yeah. Kaz, uh, he had a co the, Polish cousin war. that uh, lived in the woods in France, outside Paris. And uh, they, he was able to visit him, uh, see him on one occasion. And, but uh, Wally, uh, no, well, we didn't know, I didn't you know. didn't know about him. You didn't know about him. He ended up coming to this country and made the caramel candy at Brock's Candy for 40 years. <laughs> well, interesting. So, yeah. So was that, being in, being in Europe, did you, um, did you find that there, you had other, other relatives that you didn't know about later? No. No? Just that one. Well, we had relatives, but we still Pol don't know and Poland, never heard from them. In Poland. <laughs> We had, I had two uncles and, uh, from po in Poland, but uh, they moved, they ran out of Poland after the Russians hit them, I mean the Germans. They came to France and uh, I only, we only heard from one uncle, but the other one we never heard. Your and mother used to My mother used to write to him. And uh, so uh, right after the war, I don't know, after quite a year or two, my mother started getting letters <laughs> asking for asking for things. medicine instead of prescriptions. Would she fill it and and send them back? To, well, it's the first time she did it. So about six months later, she got another letter. She went to the druggist, and the druggist says to her, "Lady, you want, you don't want to fill this prescription." You got to stay with enough medicine to to cure the world. It was the communists we believe they believed that were forcing, forcing them, them to, to write these letters with the prescriptions to get, to the, get, the, to get the medicine. They'd get the medicine, not them. Yeah. So my mother put a kibosh to that, and uh, she wrote a nasty letter, and we never heard from them anymore. Oh no. And your father. You wrote, they, your father wrote to his family, uh, and... Uh, that was back in 19, uh, what was it, year? 29, 30. Something like and, and finally, they, their mail was returned. They must have been shipped to Siberia. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't know of any of there his are, father's... No relatives known there either, from either side now. Yeah. Did you, um, they put a question in here, how did soldiers entertain themselves when off duty? Were you ever off duty? Did you ever, oh, what did you do? Oh yeah, in basic training. In basic off. training, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? What did you do? We used to go to town and whoop it up. <laughs> whoop it up, huh? He never learned to dance because he could never get into the uh, USO canteens. <laughs> the was, lines were black long. <laughs> the lines were so long. <laughs> two walked out, and two came and went in. So what did you do instead? Just wait in line? Well, but he had some drinks. Some, yeah. some drinks. Some drinks someplace. Went down with the movie or had some stuff to tavern, had some beer or something like that. Did you, um... It was, a, it was boom, what they used to call boom towns. Boom, yeah. Their, their, their towns were just out to uh, get everything they can get out of the soldiers. Women, stuff like that. Yeah. Did, did you, when you were in Europe, did, was, did you ever have time to no. visit anything? No. There was no R&R no &R no. &R there no. during the war. Now I was in, in uh, Paris in the hospital, they wouldn't let us out either. And they, um, when you were, your mind was being boggled by the war and then they asked you how long you were there and they said, you said six months and you said it's time you went home. So it 
was very traumatic. Now, I have a lady who's, uh, who was an Army nurse who I'm going to interview. Oh, is that uh, um, Betty? I'm not sure. I don't I remember. I got her name in there. Uh, yeah, she, the, the one that belongs to the American Legion. But when you were in the she, hospital, mm -hmm. did, you, did you talk to the doctors and nurses? Oh, yeah. Were they? Did you think that they knew what they were talking about? Or? No, they just see how are you doing. They take your blood pressure. And, but when I first time I got to bed, I slept five minutes. I didn't need any more sleep because all those m months we went around sleepless, we catnapped from three in the morning. Then when they'd shove off, go all day till the next morning, two o'clock in the morning and then they'd say well now dig your trenches and get some sleep and they just about get the trenches dug and push let's we have to push off again got no sleep mm -hmm. they had no showers let's see how long did it take uh, you I had one shower in six months ah my socks rotted on my feet mm. I had to take a bayonet and scrape the socks off and my toenails were like this. I wanted to trim them with my trench knife. And it never flipped. I had a complete new nail underneath. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I guess the um, unit was getting infected with trench foot. Yeah. And so the um, our, they made them give the soldiers the came to have to take uh, shower showers. Yeah, at 20 at degrees outside, you strip, you run through and uh -huh. go outside. And 20 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were worried somebody was going to find you by the smell. <laughs> well, the, they, they all smell the same. They all smell the same. So. He, um, Did you get to wear clean clothes ever? Yeah, or were you wearing, clothes the, same, yeah, were you wearing the same thing most of the no. time? No, that I'm was good most. clean clothes. That was good. Yeah once in six months. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think they would fall apart well, just the, like your No, the, the army clothes, they were so well made. They were, what, they were wool, weren't they? Yeah. Were wool, wool. And um, they were so well made. Boots too, boots, your uh, army boots. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you're, you said that when you came out of the hospital, you didn't have anything anymore. They, did they sent you home with what, fatigues or, did, or regular? I was supposed to get my, my duffel bag, my clothes, mm -hmm. toothbrush, and everything was to come with me. We got on the train, and they said, when we get to the fire post, we'll get our duffel bags. Well, my, we never got our duffel bags. They never got any of their stuff so back. So, where do you know where it went, or did it just disappeared just disappeared yeah. well, all we had on was, was the clothes that we had on how much did they give you no your did your father come to pick you up or you came, no. came home by train from michigan i came, from, I came on my own from, by train mm -hmm. they paid my fare so how did you get back to the united states um, well I, we landed from europe in uh, Northport, Virginia. Oh, uh, by ship, by a troop ship, sure. but it was a uh, kind of my, a medical, ship. you know, ship. It was all patients. Was, it a, was it really, really big troop ship? It was a big lot of people. Troop it was probably one of the the original cruise line ships because that they were they were taking over mm -hmm. uh, so many of them. When you went over, was it when you went over or came back that it was we so came bad? on an English ship. Oh. We were mad there too. Oh. The guys were blowing our tops. It says our government gave us food to have us to feed us. Yeah. They didn't use our food. They used their food. Terrible English food. They were terrible <laughs> cooks. The guy, some guys were so mad they they couldn't eat the stuff. English food not too tasty then. Oh, you came back on an English ship then. No. I mean, I'm, I'm oh, going, o going over yeah. that, going over. So yeah. on the way back, you were on an American, American ship? Mm -hmm. Did they feed you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> it only took us 
three day, two days or something to get across. Well, wow. probably going over took you a long time because they, oh, we they have to zigzag. They have to zigzag. We were going like this to avoid the submarines, submarines or, or German ships or whatever. So, did you worry about that when you were on your we way? We didn't know that. That we didn't know that we were going. To, we were going to all different directions. <laughs> But what took us so long? Yeah. Then they realized, hey, that's what's what was happening. The radars used to pick up the submarines and then jack. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> so let's see, what did Anything I get else? to? Let's see. What did I get to? Um That's about all I can know. Well she'll have so, I want to know though too what um, you told me what you did afterward. Did you go back to school at all ever? No. Yes, no? you did. What? You went back to school. Oh yeah. Because he left school in the sixth grade and was in Chicago. Was it Chicago or Wisconsin? Wisconsin. Wisconsin, and he left in sixth grade. And I said, go. Uh, when we met, I was um, sixteen, and he was. 27. And I said, use your GI Bill and go back to school. So they tested him <clears throat> to go back to grammar school. And he had missed so much that at the age of 27, they put him in second grade. Oh my goodness. That was Dante Elementary School. And he finished that. And then he went to Crane Tech for a year. And he got the equivalent of a of a high school diploma. Well, I have uh, a bad memory. I uh, I cannot store information very long or much. When I was a baby, I was hit with a shovel. My dad was working the backyard in a pile of dirt. He was throwing the dirt against the house for the, because the water was remaining. So I actually, I wasn't paid, I was a kid. So he took the shovel and I ran across and hit me right across the back scar of the scar right there. I think there some, must have been some brain damage done there. I well, don't know. I think you remembered a lot yes, today. He did. He remembered. He remembered a lot. But I, I still, today, I, I'm not able to spell. He can read, but She's I can a read. I can spell. read. You don't need to spell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I fill out all the uh, but information. But the, the spell, that's a lost cause. You know, I had an English teacher who said <laughs> that being able to spell had nothing to do with intelligence. And she said, didn't matter what you did, mm -hmm. some people just can't spell. Uh, I could, I'll say like this, or uh, uh, say bay, B-A-Y. I'll try B-A. And I gotta take a while. It takes him a while to oh, to, why? to remember. To or sometimes I, I, won't, I can't think of the whole word at all. Just the spelling. <laughs> <laughs> I the don't spelling. Know. Who cares? Do you have any more understand. questions? So, so wait, she's well, gonna, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you um, did you stay in contact with anybody that you knew in the service after? No. no. They Not were probably Either killed or any. injured. No, no. His he is. Because a lot of them from different parts of the country, states, you know, yeah. country. Mm -hmm. Did you meet? Did you did you learn anything from meeting people from different places, or you didn't have time to? No, we didn't have no time. We didn't. We didn't go and socialize. Yeah. In fact, I should have made a mistake. I, I thought of it a couple of times, but I didn't have a pencil. I had no paper. I liked to have got the name or address and so. But the fellow I told you, they got. Uh, we got. Got in Italy? No, no. Oh. But up in the front, we were going along and the machine got opened up, we hit the ground. My buddy on my left got killed. And we did get a letter from his mother. Yeah. You didn't tell me that. Well. How did she know your address? Oh, she you, wrote to he, the company. Oh. She wrote to the army and asked? 
No, she, she, the kid they must the revolt to their parents and talked about oh, us. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You got oh. the information. <coughs> so I don't know. She sent the letter to one of the guys, and the other guy read it to us. What did she say? That I can't remember, remember anymore. So all she says, the guy says that we were, we were with a bunch, good bunch of guys, that's all. Some good, all some good was. buddies, hmm? some good buddies. Yep. Did you call each other by your real names or did you call each other by nicknames? Back in recall, I think his name was Smith. That's all I could recall. Did you talk? Did you call each other by your first names, we never or did talked. you call we buddy? Never called nobody. No, no. I mean, in no. The, when you were in basic you training, didn't, you, oh, didn't those say guys, names. I don't know. you call them by a nickname or a real name. Depends what the name was. <laughs> yeah. Well, what did they call you? Wally. Just Wally. Yeah. Did you, you ever try to stump them by making them spell your name? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the sergeant. Uh, we were out, we called out in uh, roll call the first time. And uh, he came up, he started calling the names out, and he came to mind and he says, How did you pronounce that <coughs> name? I, I told him, like Tim Chuck, two boys, Tim and Chuck. You yeah, no trouble. From that, you know. <laughs> I don't think it's hard. But you know, I know, but Cicero. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, sometimes I explain it because I said, you know, why change it to an I? Yeah. The CZ to CZ to CH. Yeah. You so wouldn't think it's that. Dad, I, you, where were you on, in Cicero? Uh, we grew up, well, I, let's see, you know, Clyde Park? Yeah, uh, my the guy that sits next to us at Wrigley Field worked at Clyde. He was in the ah, park district. Well, my, he was in the park my mom's district. Parents, my mom's whole family and her grandparents even they lived in a house across the street from Clyde Park. His dad was uh, and and Kaz lived in um, the house next to where the new fire department is. Sixteenth wow. and uh, and Central, right there. Yeah. They lived there. The house right next door. <coughs> yeah. So, did you join a veterans organization? That's one of the questions. Well, I did know. join the Catholic uh, well, War Veterans, but I didn't uh, uh, keep up with them. Yeah. Uh, at I one put, time, you were with the Elmwood Park, a VF. Was that VFW? The VFW. Now we belong to Morton Grove uh, American, uh, Legion. American Legion. Well, that VFW, all that was is a uh, party time. Yeah. There was no... Uh, they they did a few things, but not the way they do here. So they, what, did they, what did they do at the American Legion that's different? Oh, we have, we sponsor the um, uh, baseball team. Uh, we give those uh, medals to, yeah, the Boy Scouts. And Boy we Scouts. Um, give medals to, well, the auxiliary gives the medals to um, ROTC at uh, Lane Tech. I did that once. Uh, we do the thing for Poppy Day to collect for the um, uh, for the uh, fellows in, in the hospitals. And um, oh my gosh, we got a whole list of so things that we. a lot of we, service. It's oh yeah, it's a lot. Of it's service. a service uh, at community. We do things for that. Uh, the auxiliary does a lot for for them. We help the uh, post with things that they do. And we do things on our own. So well, we gave we donate money to this uh, American Legion post down south that was destroyed by fire, was it? Yeah, they do. They do that, uh -huh. and they're sending up boxes to Iraq. They're sending. Mm -hmm. They're filling boxes and sending oh, things over. Oh, we send paperbacks all the time. Yeah, yeah. and um, oh my gosh, we all that get, stuff. Yeah, they do you are, do you enjoy it? He was well, see before Morton Grove bought the mm -hmm. building and the property, uh, we had fish fries and we had um, bingo and he used to work bingo, and I used to we both did the carnival when we had the carnival. Mm -hmm. You know we had the carnival. Now Morton Grove handles all that. And yeah, the Morton Grove cut all that out. Yeah, well they remodeled the building, and we can't have the fish fries. I understand there might. 
get the bingo back, could discover they could make a percentage. Yeah, more, you know, they, everybody us. wants a, a nickel and a dime from us. So they might decide to, uh, we open the bingo. Chief Martin Grove's <laughs> in dire circumstances, the way the city and the state and the nation is. Oh, well, uh, you know what, you said you, you joined the Catholic, the Catholic group. Was it, are you Catholic? Yeah. Was it different being in the service? Was it different I to be know, Catholic? Just, no, no, they, they, were, they were the ones who... Um, Before you get discharged, yeah. they yeah. ask you, who you to want represent to you. represent right. you. I didn't know. I said, well, I'm a Catholic. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Were no. So you didn't notice that you no. were Catholic no. while you were serving at no. all? You just, no. you had, did you have a chaplain? Yeah, right. we had chaplains, but they were always in the rear end, rear of the So you didn't get to the see them. Troops. They what did you do over there in, um, in Europe? Did they have mass for you? Um, no. We, t we, would, we did stop, and at Christmas we went got to some town. Don't scratch those hives. We went to town and into a church. They had no roof on it, but we had mass there. Oh, that's good. And, uh, Walter had, uh, he had that virus in February that everybody had. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Holy Week, um, I didn't know why he was scratching, and I t almost had a heart attack. I thought he was... I didn't know what's the matter. He he had hives from his neck to his butt and all over his arm. It's very and, itchy season, I think. And he, um, we don't know what he was allergic to, but he was on steroids and um, Benadryl and hydrocortisone uh, cream, and uh, it's it's still the. Uh, Still bothering me. And you think at least your socks don't have to be scraped off. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cubs have won a few. We opening day was his birthday last Friday. Oh, happy birthday! Eighty fourth birthday, and um, so we went to mass. Well, anyway, get the back Pope. to yeah. when, it, when you get this stars. They ask you which, what we want you to be, uh, to, right. to, count. to represent you. <laughs> but I didn't keep up with them. No, he didn't. Yeah. He didn't uh, pay their dues or anything. Because but I joined uh, Al, uh, your brother-in-law, my brother-in-law. Yeah, the VFW in yeah, Elmwood he was, Park. He was a commander there, so he, he talked me into joining. So, so it all it was is... Uh, that was a long ride out to Elmwood Park. Yeah, anyway. but it was all a drinking party, that's all. Mostly, and then they wanted us to help with the baseball thing, the, the baseball yeah. field. And I said, that was his business. He was a landscaper, mainly. Yeah, but I, they wanted me to do it for free. Yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> they didn't know that sod cost 65 cents a roll. Yeah, it was then. Yeah. yeah. So um, so you, you, you joined the veterans organization, and I know you went to the World War II memorial mm -hmm. service, and you talked about that. Did you, and you haven't gone to any other reunions? Well, he doesn't know where anybody is. Yeah. Matt, you, Matt knows where his agent is. Yeah, because he was with a company. Yeah, he was yeah. with the, but I you, was you, were, you were changed so often so, you don't know where anybody is. We got changed and mixed up right off from the States. We got overseas, we're split up again. And then we got, uh, we got uh, into France. Two guys were dropped off there, three over there. By the time we got to, we looked at only two of us. Wow. We didn't, give, didn't get a chance to get acquainted and know their names. So did you, um, do you think that if there, if there were reunions that had to do with you, would you want to go? If I knew of them, yes. If you knew somebody, yeah. But, uh, I looked at uh, uh, American Legion the magazine, where it states, you know, that it was the uh, reunion. want to get a company, so wants to get uh, together with uh, with somebody that uh, knows them. Yeah. But I haven't found anybody yet that yeah. refreshing. And now his eyes got so bad, the print is small and it's hard to read. Yeah. You know yeah. anything? I've been following them to see if anybody would like to get together with, but there's nobody there that would put my outfit. So. And in the same magazine, they have a article. Um, if you know of any this person, um, to verify your medical, some medical happening, 
Yeah, they, they want you. Oh. But see, he wouldn't even know how to appeal for that. No, That's heard. why I wrote to the to St. Louis, I was telling you. But I haven't heard from him, and I don't. It does, take a long time. Does it? Yeah, really? Three, three months. Because months. I was really confused. I thought he was right there on, on, no, no, on no. June the 6th. And according to this, he didn't leave the States until... June 27th. So he couldn't have been there on June 6th. No, then. I wasn't. No, I, was I at, thought you I were. I was in the peninsula. Yeah. Normandy Peninsula. Norm yeah, it says here Normandy. Date of arrival, July 5th, Because there still, was still fighting going on at the, at the tip of the peninsula. Because, the, in other words, the, uh, like France or this the peninsula went like that. Mm. Well, did we land it in here? They were still fighting over here. Wow. Because we sat back back here waiting till they secured that. Then uh, that's when Patton came in with his tanks and we then we shoved off. We went around the uh, the coast. Well you said you know what I forgot, you said you I was thinking about this and then I didn't ask it. You said you traveled by train and you traveled by trucks and yeah. you traveled by foot. Did you mm -hmm. go any other way? And you were on the ship. Sure. Was there anything else I missed? No. Because you you didn't, you didn't you go on a car, on a horse cart or anything no, over there? No. No. Mm -hmm. no. No horses. No. Like I said, we got off the ship. It was dark. Onto a train. We sat that's in a dark. dark train. That That's in England. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it went all the way down. To, I think it could have been I don't uh, think it has a, a Dover over that way. And then we unload us and they put us on the open field and we, pumped, we set up tents, pup tents, we slept underneath the tents. Did you have your tent to yourself or did you have to share? So each had their own. Oh. So, and then like I said, they, they, next couple of days later they said, take up your tents, we're going to be moving out. Oh. And then we, it took us to to the shipyard, and well, was our ship that on uh, on the twentieth in the morning, and uh, by uh, that evening, and then morning we hit the beach. Then, oh, we got a rough ride there in that water. That, that old, uh, on the barges, was that, that, that thing was the, the, uh, the channel was rough. Well, the, the guys, if they weren't sick. When they landed, they were sick going over. They were really in bad yes. shape. Because they had to postpone the invasion yeah. anyway. Yeah, they postponed it the one day, kind of. The, the weather. The weather. So were you? had you ever been on the water before? Had you ever Not a ship, no. I've been on a boat fishing. <laughs> Never that choppy on a boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, the other question, well, they say, how did your service and experiences affect your life and your health? Well, I, I got to the point where I keep things to myself. I don't he was discuss, very bitter. I don't carry conversation very often. Mentally it affected I, him. I, I feel bitter. All the way around. Yeah. So, so sorry you had to serve at all. Yeah. Well, because the whole darn trouble is, when I was born, we were deprived of everything because of depression. Well, yeah, yeah. twenty nine, yeah. And. Then, like I said, after I got out of the CCs, what did we get? Slave labor? The women didn't make us happy. They didn't have unions or anything then. It was, and, and when he got out of the CCCs, their letters got mixed up, and he didn't know that the folks had moved back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. So he hitchhiked from Stevens Point, Wisconsin, to Chicago. Because they didn't have any money to take a train or a bus or whatever they had. They didn't have buses, I guess. No. 
Yes, so he hitchhiked home to Arlington, Arlington, Arlington yeah. Street. Yeah. Forty twenty Arlington, mm -hmm. Chicago. So then, did you did having military experience change how you thought about war or about the military, or did you? Or what did you think about it? Before the war, before any of the war, did you ever think about war at all? No. No. Like the First World War, uh, no. that no, you didn't no. think about anything well, like that. The only time I can remember it, uh, uh, the friends of our my folks was in the World War One. Oh, he he was came like, out of the like service. Like my uncle, uh, he came and stayed with us for a couple of days. Mm. Just out of Mars or mm -hmm. he stayed with did us for a couple of about, days. Did he talk about? Did he? Did, no, you, I didn't did know. you have no? We we were taught. We didn't. We were only talked we were to people when we were spoken heard. to. Yeah. And if they they spoke to us, we answered, and then we went to our own room, and we were shut off from them, whatever was going on. The adults on. were together, and the children were together. So after after the war, did you did you think anything about war? No. You just. Or what Men did you that think mentally when, he was in a bad way. When now, when we're at when we're at war, do you uh, do you, do you think it's a it's a good thing or a bad thing? I don't thing think we should have been in one. Yeah. I don't think we should have been in it. But who am I to say? <laughs> because all those poor guys. It's not a war, it's, 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 it's like gangsters, like Capone. It's not mm -hmm. just the Americans, but look at all the people over there who have been killed. Thousands and thousands that we'll never know about. Well, another thing I could remember and I forgot to mention was we passed a concentration camp. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Do you know which camp it was? It was in France. My had to be. Yeah. yeah. And what did you? Did, well, were there people well, there? Well, we know we smelled. Smelled smell the, the smoke. Was the odor? You know how some people deny that the Holocaust ever happened. Yeah. Well, he can tell you that you it that. did. The because the we had to move on. We couldn't couldn't stay because we. we, we they they did not. Were, was it already evacuated? Or, or opened yeah, up? No, yeah. It was, uh, there was still a couple of uh, patients, uh, guys running around nude. Oh, really? They, they didn't get a chance to get into, we didn't get in time to, to, to save the rest because it was too late. Some of the other units uh, did rescue them because the Germans had run away, so they rescued the guys, but mm -hmm. they did, but Walters unit did not uh, do that, but he said, I smelled it. I know it happened. Well, I've seen the enclosure. Mm -hmm. i seen the guys run around nude there. They Wait, were, waiting to have the gates open. Yeah, they open. stripped them out of their clothes. They took yeah, their clothes yeah, away. took everything away. They were all the possessions and Indeed. marched them into the I forgot chamber. about that myself, that you had told me that. Yep, it's not a, that's a bitter thing in, in, your, in your throat. It chokes you up. I'm surprised you ever married a German. <laughs> I'm, I'm Alsatian, German, and French. <laughs> so? Yeah. So is there anything else that we didn't talk about? I can't think of anything of him. You don't want to mention your animosity for the French? No. No. Okay. No. That's it. Yes. I so. want to thank you so much. Because well, do you want to take some souvenirs? That's a, you wanna, that's a, do you want to show her the things? You want to look some souvenirs? Uh, yeah, show me I don't stuff. know that he... Okay, get yeah. those. Do you want to get the box?